In this recording, we shall look at some common matrix operations in terms of the conditions required for these operations to be defined. For actual how to carry out these matrix operations, have a look at some of our other recordings. Now the first one we're going to look at is addition and subtraction of matrices. And in order for addition or subtraction to be defined, the matrices concerned must have the same order. Let's start off by seeing what the order of each of the matrices above is. Recall that the order is the number of rows by the number of columns. So matrix A, for instance, has two rows and two columns, so it is two by two. While matrix B with two rows and three columns is two by three, as is also matrix C, and matrix D has three rows and two columns. So you can see that the only two matrices above that we could add or subtract would be matrix B and matrix C, since they are of the same order. So in other words, B plus C, B minus C, C plus B, or C minus B. All of those would be defined. And B plus C equals C plus B. That is, addition is commutative, whereas clearly B minus C would not be equal to C minus B. Now, while we could not combine any of these other matrices in addition, what about something like B plus D transpose? And what happens when we transpose a matrix? Now when we transpose a matrix, we interchange the rows and the columns. So D transpose is going to be order two by three, since matrix D is order three by two. So yes, we could actually work out B plus D transpose, B minus D transpose, C plus D transpose, and so on. So those would be the matrices for which we could perform addition or subtraction. So now let's look at when matrix multiplication is defined. And if we're finding P times Q, then if P is order M by N, Q must be order N by R. Or one way of writing it out is M by N, N by R. This is saying the number of columns of the matrix P on the left must be equal to the number of rows of the matrix Q on the right. And the resulting matrix in such a case will actually be order M by R. And recall A was 2 by 2. Now B and C were both 2 by 3. So therefore AB, for instance, a 2 by 2 matrix multiplied by a 2 by 3 matrix Number of columns of A matches the number of rows of B, so yes, AB is defined, and by the same reasoning, so is AC. And in each case, that product will result in a 2 by 3 matrix. But what about BA? If we work out BA, then order of B, 2 by 3, order of A, 2 by 2, so the number of columns of B is not equal to the number of rows of A. Therefore, the product BA is not defined. So that demonstrates that not only is it often the case that AB is not equal to BA, sometimes it might even be that one of these is defined and the other one is not, as in this case. And finally, looking at our matrix D, Matrix D was three rows, two columns. So you'll see that CD would be defined, but for instance, AD would not be defined as a two by two matrix could not be multiplied by a three by two matrix in that order. So these are examples of when multiplication is defined. The next question is when can we calculate the determinant of a matrix? And the answer is the determinant can only be calculated for square matrices. And a square matrix has the same number of rows and columns. So here matrix A is square, 
being a 2x2 two two matrix, but matrices B, C and D, they are not square. So therefore, of the above matrices, we could only compute the determinant of matrix A. However, if, for instance, we were doing a product of two of these matrices, where that product resulted in a square matrix, we could then get the determinant of that resulting product of matrices. So for example, B times D, that's a 2 by 3 matrix multiplied by a 3 by 2 matrix. That's defined as we saw before and results in a matrix that is square. In particular, a matrix that is 2 by 2. So therefore, we could calculate the determinant of BD. Now the final question is, when does a matrix have an inverse? And we only talk about an inverse of a square matrix, but we also have a further restriction. A matrix P only has an inverse if the determinant of P is not equal to zero. So right away we saw the only square matrix here was matrix A. So does A inverse exist? Well, let's work out the determinant of A. And that's worked out here as 1 times 4 minus 3 times negative 2, which is equal to 10. That is not 0, so therefore, in fact, A inverse does exist. So those are some examples to demonstrate when certain calculations, matrix operations can be carried out.